Team Gamer here, and I know what you guys are going to be asking. Victini, why haven't you uploaded the discussion video on time? Well, that's because I went to Fanime Con, aka Fanime Weekend, or just Fanime Con. So yeah, I went on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So basically, at the time when the special program just released. So I did recover recently on um, con feet because, well, uh, every time you walk around the con, of course, your feet hurt because, of course, you're just walking around. But I have recovered, and now I am going to be uploading this uh, discussion video. So yeah, well, anyways, no time to waste. It's time to talk about the discussion of Genshin 4.7. Of course, I need to get this out of the way first. Uh, they did announce Natlin in the uh, 4.7 uh, special program. So um, basically after 4.7, it's going to be Natlin. So basically we're going to be jumping straight to 5.0. So yeah, um, this is going to be very, very interesting. Um, I can't wait to see what Natlin has in store. But um, we're not going to talk about Natlin, of course, today. We're going to be talking about the uh, special program. So... Without any further ado, let's just transition to the uh, special program. There we go. And now it's time to get started. So, um, well, let's just get on with it. So this is an everlasting dream intertwined. I will be trying to go as fast as I can. Um, just so I can get to the honey impact section. So yeah, um, I'm going to be uh, doing this a bit differently. I'm going to be speeding through the special program. And then I'm going to be going to the um, honey impact section where I can be talking about the characters and as well as the weapons in greater detail. And speaking of which, of course, all my info comes from the uh, 4.7 special program as well as honey impact. Those are my sources. So if you want to check those out, um, the 4.7 special program is on YouTube. And Honey Impact, you can literally just search it up. Just search up Honey Impact or Genshin Impact Honey Impact. And it will probably be the first website that'll pop up. It has a Lisa um, icon. So you'll know um, if you do go to Honey Impact if you see a Lisa icon. So yeah. Well, anyways, um, now it's time to uh, talk about the actual um, update. So here we go. So first up is Chlorand who is a Electro Sword character that uses Bond of Life as a mechanic. So yeah, so this is going to be our second Bond of Life character, um, at least um, who uses Bond of Life as their mechanic. And Chlorand is honestly really, really cool. I can um, showcase um, all her animations here. Um, which, if the video could load, of course. Um, this is going to be her normal attacks right here. As you see there, they are pretty fast. Um, she probably might be one of the fastest normal attackers in the game. Uh, her elemental skill right here, um, basically, uh, changes her stance and she uses a gun and sword for her attacks. Um, you saw it for a split second. I'm pretty sure they're gonna showcase it again as you see there. Look at how fast she attacks. It is really, really cool to see that. But yeah, um, she honestly might be one of the best Electro, um, main DPSs in the game. Um, people did say that her damage is pretty low because of the numbers that she has on um, her stats. But I'm pretty sure it's like a write-in situation where people think that she's bad, but in reality, she's pretty good. As long as you give her like the right artifacts and setups and whatnot. So yeah, um, Chloran, it looks pretty good. Um, her main mechanic is basically Bond of Life though, as I said before. She scales off a of Bond of Life, which I think she's probably the first character in the game who scales her damage off a of bond of life yeah which is really weird because arlen kino doesn't do that arlen kino scales off of attack uh chloran scales off a of bond of life so yeah this is going to be a very very interesting um character to play as and also to test out but since i don't have primos i can't test her out so yeah um, as for her burst um which well they will showcase here it looks pretty cool honestly I mean, um, you'll see it right here. Kablam! There we go. Um, all it does is basically increase her bond of life. And she's able to do AoE electro damage. So yeah, that's basically it. And as for her overworld passive talent, it's basically 
um, she's able to find uh, well, Fontaine local specialties. So yeah, that's basically it. That is your uh, Sparks Notes version of Clorand right there. She is a main Electro DPS who is a Bond of Life um, scaler. So yeah. As for Siegeween, Siegeween is a Hydro Bow character who uses Bond of Life as well. So yeah, she is also a Bond of Life user. But she's more um, towards the sub DPS side than the uh, support side, to say the least. Um, you could say she is a hybrid um, of sorts, but she leans more of the sub DPS type because of her um, passive skills as well as how her mechanics work. Um, you'll see what I mean um, once I show the gameplay here. So her normal attack um, is basically her throwing pills and as well as uh, shooting arrows and throwing pills right there. Yeah, she's literally like the per like a mini Dr. Mario. She's literally Dr. Mario. Um, as her E, um, right here, she's able to use E um, as a, a projectile, a bubble, of course. There are different types of um, tiers for her E. You can make it small, you can make it uh, medium size, or you can make it really big. It traps small enemies, of course, so basically um, for Spiral Abysses that have small enemies like Killy Churls or Treasure Hoarders or Fatui members. Fatui members can be trapped, by the way, and can be staggered, so it works on them. Um, you can basically use her elemental skill for that. She is able to bounce the ball up to five times on enemies, so you're able to do at least five uh, applications of Hydro, So, which means that you're able to do Hydro um, reactions. Um, at least five times for Siege Ween. Um, she's able to, of course, um, drop two water source droplets, as you see there, right there. Um, if she collects them, she's able to get Bond of Life, which gives her energy back for her elemental burst. So yeah, um, keep that in mind if you are using Siege Ween. Um, of course, the water source droplets work for Nouvellet as well, because Nouvellet also drops uh, water source droplets. It's also the same for the reverse of Siege Ween, where if you use... Um, Nouvellet's elemental skill, you're able to drop three hydro source water droplets, and Siege Ring can pick those up. So yeah, so basically it's the reverse is true. Um, if Siege Ring uses her elemental skill to make water source droplets, Nouvellet can absorb them. If Nouvellet can use elemental skill to make three water source droplets, Siege Ring can pick them up. So yeah, um, they are basically universals. Uh, water source droplets are universal to those two characters. And it makes sense too, because Siege Ween is a Melozine, while Nouvellet is a Hydro Dragon. So yeah, it, it basically makes sense uh, that they can make uh, water source droplets. But um, yeah, uh, her elemental burst is pretty simple too. She basically summons a big syringe, which does AoE Hydro damage based off her max HP. Um, by the way, that is also the same case for elemental skill that also um, scales off of max HP. So you definitely want her to have max HP as well as crit rate crit damage to balance out her E and her burst damage. It is really, really good. So yeah, that's you see what I mean when I said that she is a sub DPS? Because her elemental skill, um, which I will explain later, does have a hidden mechanic where it basically increases her damage. And her burst is based off her max HP, which is a big, big damage burst. And she also is able to absorb water droplets around her. So yeah, it is pretty, pretty good. As for her uh, overworld passive talent, if your characters are under 50% HP, you're able to heal yourself based off of 50% of your max HP. And also, um, your elemental and physical resistance will be decreased by 10%, which sucks. But at least you heal yourself right underwater. So yeah, um, so if you are basically struggling against underwater um, underwater uh, bosses like uh, this crab right here for the local legends, you can just pick up Siege Ween and just make your life way easier. So yeah. Um, but other than that, Siege Ween looks like a pretty good uh, Hydro sub DPS. Honestly, pretty, pretty busted. To be honest, because she's able to trap smaller enemies, so basically those floors that probably have like one enemy or something like that, she's able to lock down. She's also pretty good on monolith um, type challenges where she's able to trap enemies as well, which is pretty nice. Her burst looks pretty good as well, it's able to do a ton of damage as well as uh, get free hydro application as well. So yeah, um, Siege Ween looks pretty good, it's like Chlorand. Um, basically we don't know... Uh, if these two characters are pretty good or not, uh, only time will tell. We just have to test them out. So, yeah, that's basically it. And last but not least, our four-star representative. 
which is Sethos. Sethos is a EM scaling uh, main DPS electro bow character. So yeah, um, she he is basically a pretty basic character. I would say he's probably like around the well tier. Um, if we did test him more and um, we would say he's pretty good, then I would say he's probably like Gaming tier. But uh, as of right now, I'm pretty sure Sethos is probably like Noel tier, to be honest. So yeah. But um, his normal attack is basically just he does a level 2 right here. You see there? Bam. Um, there is also a passive talent for him that basically um, gives him an excuse for using his level 2. There's also um, his burst as well, which basically converts his normal attacks into level 2 charge attacks. But um, I am getting ahead of myself here. Uh, let's talk about the uh, elemental skill right here. So basically, Sethos does a backdash, which um, right here, bam, does uh, electro damage. So think of it like uh, Kaveh's... Um, elemental skill where it does AOE dendro damage and as for his burst I said before uh, it turns his uh, normal attacks into level 2 charge attacks so yeah it's pretty cool as you see there look at that electro application on uh, burst um, remember all of these attacks count as charge attacks as I said before so um, keep that in mind uh, it does not count as a normal attack so yeah um, but it's still pretty good as well because it is his main bread and butter is his level 2 charge attacks and his burst is pretty good as well and as for um his uh passive talent they got this wrong you see here that is a hydro symbol meaning that it's from fontaine right that's wrong he collects stuff from samaru this should have been a dendro um a dendro bag instead of a hydro bag but um i will correct them yes this is Den or this is the dendro version of um, local specialty so he's able to um collect dendro um well not dendro but uh samaru samaru local specialties so yeah um that is set those um he looks pretty decent on as a four star looks pretty good um em scaling so he's able to basically work with uh, dendro teams as well so yeah pretty cool um, of course, there's going to be a new Archon Quest Bedtime Story, which is going to be focused on um, the relationship between uh, Lumine and Aether. So basically, a more lore drop. Dane Sleep is going to be there too. You know if Dane Sleep is going to be on there, you know there's going to be a massive lore drop. So yeah, um, look forward to it. I am I'm also looking forward to it as well. So yeah. And as for banners, I would say this is probably like the set or this is a set of really good banners. This is probably like one of the best sets, honestly. Um, Fontaine has been killing it for these uh, banners. Um, they are really, really hard to skip. I will say that. Um, Chlorand, um, we're not sure how good she is, but I'm pretty sure, in my opinion, she's probably going to be a really good Electro uh, main DPS. Probably like right in tier, honestly, right in tier. Um, that's how potentially good she can be. Um, especially if you account her teams like Quicken, Aggravate, Hyper Bloom, uh, Overload. Yeah, basically those teams right there. Chlorand is pretty good on those, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, um, Chlorand probably might be a pickup, honestly. I'll hate them. Um, everybody knows how good I'll hate them is. He's good on basically every Dendro team you could possibly imagine. He's the best Dendro DPS in the game. Has really good Dendro application. Does really high damage. Um, if you are serious about uh, maining I'll hate them, you should probably get him C1. But he really doesn't need it. C1 just basically makes him more comfortable to play because it decreases the cooldown of his elemental skill. Meaning that you're able to get your Dendro application more. So yeah. Um, sadly though, for me, I have to skip on I'll hate them, but I will be summoning for Sethos, which is the 4-star focus for, um, this, um, particular phase. Uh, so I will be summoning for Chlorand, um, for Sethos, so I'm just gonna be summoning the Chlorand banner for Sethos. But, um, whichever comes first, Chlorand or Sethos, I wouldn't mind. Same with I'll hate them, I guess. But, um... I'm only mainly going for Sethos, and I'll just be calling it a day, so yeah, but um, as far as my opinion on these two really, really good um, characters. And next up, you probably already saw uh, once I scrubbed through the um, the uh, well video, we got Siegeween and Farina. Siegeween, um, as we said, or as I said before, 
is a pretty good Hydro Sub DPS support hybrid. She's able to heal. She's able to trap enemies with a bubble. She's able to basically um, support a bunch thanks to her mechanics. And yeah, um, she's pretty good overall. Um, probably like uh, Sean Yoon tier or um, probably like uh, Chevra's tier in uh, support capability. I would say that, yeah. Um, that's where Sea Dream probably will lie. Um, as for Farina, everybody knows how good Farina is. The best Hydro character in the game, in my opinion. Um, she does everything. She's a sub DPS. She's a support. She can heal. She does the bee's knees. She does everything that you could possibly ever want on a character. If you do uh, run um, Farina as a sub DPS, you just only need one copy of her. She doesn't need constellations, but if you are running a support Farina, um, I would say get her C2 because it is definitely super worth it because on C1, she's able to basically increase her fanfare limit to 400 and also start with 150 fanfare when you cast your burst, which is pretty good. As for C2, she's able to accelerate the fanfare um, gain, which is really, really good. Basically, it'll only take you, like, what? Like, five seconds to get your, um, max fanfare. And also, for every point of fanfare above the fanfare limit, you're able to increase your max HP. And, well, Farina scales off of max HP. Her damage, her healing, basically everything that she does is scaled off of max HP. So, yeah, this is definitely a worthwhile, uh, constellation to pick up if you are gonna be maining, uh, support Farina, which is what I did. So, yeah. So, um, again, uh, as for the uh, order of summoning to uh, summon these characters on, there's not really an order. Everyone's basically really good, but if I would have to say the order of uh, summon choice, I would say probably Farina, I'll hate them. Farina, I'll hate them, Siege and Chlorand, but they are really, really close. They're really, really tight um, together. So, yeah. Um, it really doesn't matter what you pick. Um, I would say just uh, pick whoever you want. After all, love triumphs all. So if you love the character for their, well, personality, their kit, their gameplay, um, their name card, or whatever, um, basically summon for them. I am not stopping you. Uh, love triumphs all. Just remember that. Always. And as for the new weapons that we're going to get in this version, we have Absolution, which is a sword. We have Silver Shower Heartstrings, which is a bow. And we also have another bow um, right here. Uh, as you see there, I could scrub through. There's a bow right there. Um, that is a Sethos bow. So yeah, you basically get a free bow for Sethos. So you don't need to summon for a premium weapon for him. But um, of course, Absolution is Chloran's sword. Silver Shower Heartstrings is Siege Wing's bow. So yeah. Um, and well, they did show an anime... Um, an animated trailer right here. Um, if you haven't seen that before, you should see it. It's on their official YouTube channel. So, um, of course you can see it. But, um, I already watched it, so I am not going to spoil anything for you guys. So, yeah. And as for the events, they are pretty straightforward. Most of these events are basically domain events. So, Imaginarium Theater, or Theater, my bad. Imaginarium Theater is basically just a, a domain event, as you see there. You just do domain stuff, you're doing battles and whatnot, as you see there. Um, of course, there's multiple events um, for this uh, game mode because this is going to be the central game mode for this version update. Just like uh, Arataki Music Festival, this will be our main um, event for this version. So yeah, pretty cool. As you see there, there's like multiple activities to do, multiple rewards. So make sure you do this, by the way, guys. You get a free billet. Yeah, free billet. You don't get that every day. So yeah, definitely do it. As for the next event, we have Mutual Security Enhancing Simulation, which basically we get the Cloud Forged Bow, which is Sethos' best free-to-play bow. Yeah, it's an EM bow. So yeah, keep that in mind. Um, and we also get Cam of Cables of Law, which basically increases our refine to R5, which is a free R5 bow. We get a Crowd of Insight, which is pretty cool. And this is just another, well, um, quote-unquote domain event, but it is tower, um, defense, or, well, uh, 
yeah, that's basically uh, tower defense. You basically deploy uh, enemies, and then the enemies do damage to other towers, which is pretty cool. So basically, it's like a reverse um, tower defense game, where instead of using the tower, you use enemies as well. So yeah. So in addition to the towers, you use enemies to defeat other stuff. So yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool. And you basically defend the monolith, which is your home base. So yeah, that's basically it. It's just tower defense. As for the next event, we have Endless Forms of Most Martial, which is basically just another domain event. Um, just defeat enemies as fast as you can. Free rewards. So yeah, um, pretty, pretty good. And as for the next event, we have Spino... Uh, was it Spino Double Blaster? Um, which is from the Klee Summer event. So um, it is making its grand return and all you do is shoot balloons. Yeah, that's basically it. Shoot balloons, get points. Um, get the maximum amount of points to basically uh, get the rewards that you want. And that's basically it. And I think last but not least, this is the last event. Record of Reflective Writing, which is basically just a dungeon crawler event where you're able to collect coins in a labyrinth. So basically, you gotta collect all the coins. Collect all the coins, uh, make sure to avoid all the obstacles, and you should get your rewards pretty fast. So yeah, that's basically it. And as for uh, Genius Invocation TCG, um, we do get a lot of cards right here. So we got Risley, Yunjin, Farina, uh, Shenyan, um, Kave. We got the Dendro Dragon. We get the Narwhal. We got this Hydro or this Animal Serpent from Samaru, and we also got these uh, Electro Scorpion. So yeah, pretty uh, cool. If you are into TCG, that this is going to be a pretty big update. So yeah. And next up. We have system optimizations, which is pretty cool. I mean, they always in, um, improve uh, this game, which is pretty nice. Makes quality of life pretty easy. So for 4.7, um, they have it on the top left right here. You lo Basically, they lowered the adventure rank requirement for um, uh, adventure encounters uh, to R uh, AR24. So basically, um, it's those, basically those types of, um, I think, story events that you're able to get. Um, I'm pretty sure you have to be AR30 to get them. They just reduced it down to AR24, which is pretty accessible. So yeah, pretty cool. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> if I am wrong, then correct me, please. Um, as for the um, other stuff, I think this is probably the biggest update that they did for this version, which basically is they increased the um, resin cap from 160 to 200, So which is pretty nice. So basically, you don't have to stress about your resin ever reaching 160 because it'll probably never do that once we get this update. So basically we're getting 200 resin, which means more resin to spend. Pretty, pretty cool, honestly. And I think the last um, version optimization they did, yeah, they added a fast fill function for um, fast equipping artifacts, which is pretty cool. So yeah, um, that is all the system optimizations. And of course, at the end of the video, they teased Natlin. And all I'm gonna say is, uh, it's just basically Pokemon. That that's basically it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing more to be said there. All right. Now, since we did uh go through the special program, now it's finally time to go to Honey Impact. So let's transition right now. There we go. Okay. So Honey Impact. Here we go. There's a lot of new stuff to discuss. So we got. Of course, Sea Dream, Sethos, Cloran, Absolution, Cloudforge, Silver Shower, Heartstrings, basically all the stuff that are basically new. We get food, of course, uh, character specific food. We get um, name cards. We got TCG cards. Yeah, a lot of new stuff for this um, version, honestly. Um, even though it is kind of a nothing update. So, yeah. Um, first up, we're going to be talking about Cloran. Um, of course, I will be breezing through because I already did talk about everything here. So her level up stat is crit rate, which is pretty nice um, because her weapon, um, spoiler alert, is crit damage. Um, she does five consecutive strikes on her normal attack. Her Eeb is basically, I already said before, the more bond of life she has, the greater her damage becomes. She also self-sustains her, herself because if her um, bond of life is less than 100% of her max HP, she's able to heal based off a of bond of life. So yeah, she's able to self-sustain herself on top of doing a bunch of damage, which is pretty, pretty cool. And also, um, she's able to increase the multiplier of her heal even further. 
um, if her bond of life is greater than 100% of her max HP, which is pretty cool too. So yeah, she's able to heal and do damage, which is pretty nice. Um, as for burst, it's just a basic burst, which basically gives her bond of life. Um, we basically grants bond of life before doing damage, and guess what? She scales off of bond of life. So yeah, um, really nothing to be said there. And as for passive talents, we already talked about this one, so let's go to the other passive talents. So basically, when um, Cloran does a normal uh, Electro reaction, she's able to do 20% of her attack for 15 seconds, which is pretty cool. So basically, normal attack does 20% more damage with a max of 3 stacks, which is pretty, pretty busted. So she's able to do even more damage than before on top of her Bond of Life scaling. So yeah, it, it's, it's pretty dumb. So yeah. And her second passive talent, so when her bond of life is greater or equal to 100% for her max HP, she's able to increase her crit rate by 10% for two stacks, by the way. Yeah, it is really busted. And also, um, Hunter's Vigil's Night Vigil state is buffed. So basically, you're able to heal up to 100% of your converted bond of life. Yeah, um, the, basically this this effect right here yeah so basically you're able to heal even more on top of doing more damage with this passive talent yeah chlorand is good she's able to self-sustain herself she's able to basically keep up with um her team basically she doesn't need healing because she heals herself so yeah pretty cool character <laughs> but um of course um we have to see more gameplay to truly determine if she's really good or not but so far um as you saw in the kit she is pretty good and here we have Siege Queen. Um, her level up stat is HP, of course, because she scales off of HP. Um, her E is basically self-explanatory. She's able to restore um, HP to all party members besides Siege Queen, of course, um, based off of Siege Queen's max HP when her E hits a um, enemy. So yeah, basically every time her E hits an enemy, she's able to heal herself, which is pretty cool. Um, she also gets her healing back after the uh, ball bounces five times. So yeah, um, not only um, she heals her party based off her max HP, she's able to heal herself based off her max HP too. So she's basically able to self-sustain herself um, and it also heals her off field, which is pretty cool. And um, her E, when you hold her E, she's able to increase the size of it. Um, of course, um, the bigger uh, the bubble is the higher the damage it's able to do and the higher the healing it's able to do so yeah it is pretty pretty cool um also she's able to create two source um source water droplets as i mentioned before um if she collects it it's a, it's worth 10 percent of her bond of life worth of her max hp and every time she um clears her bond of life basically every time her um, five bounces hit she's able to um, get one elemental energy for every 2000 hp she has and she's able to regain five elemental energy this way so basically she's able to do this um pretty frequently honestly so she's able to get her burst really fast and her burst is nothing to scoff at either so basically when she um uses her burst it does aoe uh hydro damage based off her max hp and she absorbs um hydro droplets as well before using the skill which is pretty pretty nice so she's able to basically get this off as well so yeah pretty pretty good um we did talk about this before emergency dose um so we'll talk about these here so basically um she gets semi strict bed rest um if you use rebound uh hydrotherapy which is her elemental skill right there um when you use your elemental skill um off or on your nearby off field party members other than siege Wien, you're basically able to deal damage and um basically get 8% hydro damage bonus for 10 stacks. You can also consume one stack um, if you, uh, I think, use an elemental, yeah, if you use an elemental skill um, of your nearby off-field party members. So basically, um, if you don't use a elemental skill with Siege Ring, you're consuming one stack of, of Covalentsense, uh, and you're able to increase the damage um, dealt by your elemental skill, which is pretty, pretty cool. So every time um, Siege Wien's, um eight or every 1,000 HP Siege Wien has above 30,000 increases the damage by 80, which is flat, by the way. So yeah, so basically, when you use Siege Wien's elemental skill, you basically get a flat 8% hydro damage bonus, 10 stacks of this, 
Every elemental skill you do that is not sea joints basically consumes one stack, which basically increases the damage by 80. Yeah, which is really, really broken. So yeah. Um, so she's basically able to um, increase the damage of her elemental skill as well as increase the damage of nearby party members, which is pretty cool. And as for her um, second passive talent, when she performs healing, the amount of healing increases based on the total value of bond of life on all party members. So yeah, this is pretty cool. She's able to basically increase um, her healing. And also for every 1000 HP worth of bond of life, the healing is increased by 3% and a max of 30% in this way. So she's basically able to increase the amount of healing based off her bond of life. So basically she heals more. Yeah, so basically she is a uh, sub DPS support hybrid, as I said before. So yeah, um, Siege Reed looks pretty good, honestly. Probably like, um, not Kokomi tier, probably, um, as I said before, probably like uh, Shang Yun or um, Shang Yun tier, uh, or probably like, um, or probably like, uh, like other uh, similar uh, supports like um, Chevrus. So yeah. And as for the final character that we can discuss is Sethos. He's pretty simple, so I could just briefly explain it. So he has EM, that's his growth uh, stat. He has a level two charge attack, as I said before. It's pretty cool. Um, his E basically um, increases um, your elemental energy. So yeah, basically um, when you use an E and you basically trigger a uh, elemental reaction, you get energy back flat 12, by the way, which is pretty nice. Um, which basically helps with this burst, which does, um, well, it is scaled off of his elemental mastery, which means that you probably want to build him with a lot of elemental mastery. Um, all your normal attacks become charge attacks. And basically if you do leave the field, when this is up, it'll be canceled. So don't leave the field when this is up. So yeah, um, his elemental or his, um, passive skills are pretty interesting as well. So basically... This one basically decreases the charge time of your level 2 charge attack, um, but at the cost of consuming your elemental energy. So yeah. Um, so basically, if you are going to be going for a level 1, it basically decreases it by 50% uh, of your um, charge levels. I think it's, ta yeah, it's tallied on your elemental energy. So basically, if you want to do a level 2 really fast, um, you are basically costing yourself your energy. So keep that in mind. Um, as for uh, her, his second um, passive, he's able to basically um, he's ba he's ba able to basically uh, increase his damage by seven hundred percent of his elemental mastery. But if he, well, after five seconds, he hits an opponent with a shadow piercing shot, aka using his charge attack, or after four piercing shots, strike an opponent his thing will be cancelled. So keep that in mind. So you can only able to basically get four shots in before this um, goes on cooldown for 15 seconds. So yeah, but 700% um, increase of elemental mastery is nothing to scoff at. So yeah, it is really, really good. So yeah, Sethos looks pretty decent. Um, again, I will say he's probably like Noel tier. Uh, so yeah, um, Sethos, pretty cool uh, addition to the roster. So yeah. As for weapons, weapons, oh boy, are pretty good, of course. Um, Cloran's is basically um, crit damage. She's able to get another 20% uh, crit damage here. So basically the true stats of this is 64. 64.1% crit damage on a sword. Yeah, um, pretty good. <laughs> um, she's able to increase the value of bond of life damage by 60% of a max of three stacks so this is literally made for chloran which basically the more bond of life she has the stronger her attacks are so yeah pretty good as for uh chloran or as for sejuine's bow um it is a hp percent bow of course because she scales off of hp um she has a remedy effect which basically um you get a HP increase of 12, 24, or 40 based on how much um, stacks you have. And also the stacks are pretty easy to get as well. So basically you can get one stack for um, using elemental skill. You can get one stack for increasing the bond of life value. Or you can get one stack for performing healing. And by the way, you can get these stacks when the character is not on the field. So basically you can use like Raiden E and you get a stack of remedy. 
or you can use uh, Farina Heal and you get one stack of Remedy. But um, as for Bond of Life, you probably want Siege Wing on the field because I don't think you're probably going to have a lot of Bond of Life characters on the team anyway. So yeah, um, especially not Arlen Kino. You're not going to run Arlen Kino with, um, with Siege Wing unless you really want to, of course. But um, yeah, um, as for this secondary thing, um, definitely have Siege Wing at least collect one orb. So yeah, but... If you have three stacks and those three stacks are active, your burst crit rate will increase by 28%. So yeah, and of course it'll be canceled um, if you are under three seconds or if you're under three stacks, of course. But they are pretty easy to keep up because they last for 25 seconds each. Well, at least two of them last for 25 seconds. One of them lasts for 20 seconds. So yeah, um, but still, it looks like it's pretty good. She's able to increase the burst damage um, on top of her uh, passives, increasing her elemental skill damage. So she basically is just a sub DPS. Um, so yeah. And as for the free to play blow, we have Cloud Forge, which is a EM bow. I will be talking about the R5 effect since we're gonna be getting um, R5 for free. So you're basically able to increase 80 elemental mastery for 18 seconds as long as your elemental energy is decreased, which combos well with Sethos's passive talent, which decreases um, elemental energy for level two charge attack or level one, um, depending on what charge attack you want. But yeah, it's pretty good. Um, I mean, this is Sethos's best free to play bow. So yeah, uh, it's nice that they actually give us a, a bow that we can use for Sethos. So yeah, pretty, pretty decent. And that is basically it for, um, this uh discussion video yeah um i actually blazed through that that was pretty short so yeah well anyways um hope you guys enjoyed that discussion video of course if you do enjoy it be sure to leave a like down below as well as subscribe to the channel if you are new um if you are new by the way and if you did subscribe make sure to turn on the notification bell to not miss out on a single upload again any amount of support is greatly appreciated liking and subscribing to the channel helps fuel my passion for making Genshin videos. I really love making them and discussing um, topics with you guys. And seeing you guys enjoying my videos being, brings me great joy. So thank you guys so much for the support. As always, without you guys, I wouldn't be here. So yeah. And well, um, as for the comments, what do you think of 4.7? You think it's good? You think it's bad? Are you excited for Natlin? Are you not? You think this update would be mid? You think it's awesome? Are you summoning for Clan for Clarand? Are you summoning for Siegeween? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thank you guys for watching this Genshin discussion video. And I'll see you guys in the next Genshin video.